In this video, I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to generate a VPAX file. So let's say you have this Power BI report and you've got a bunch of report consumers uh, and they start to tell you that performance isn't great. Um, that is typically due to either poor report design, maybe a bad semantic model, or bad DAX expressions. For the latter two, um, you may recruit some help. Uh, if it's someone within your company, it may be no problem to share your PBX, PBIX file because they may have full access to the same data that you do. Uh, however, if you get help from someone outside your company, you may not be able to share the data and therefore can't share that PBIX file. Um, so what you may hear a request from someone that's trying to help you out, whether it's someone from Microsoft or some other third party, uh, is they may say, hey, send me a VPAX file of your model. And what a VPAX file contains is a bunch of metadata and statistics about your model so they can uh, maybe give you some recommendations for improvement without seeing the data itself. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so in this case, I've got this model here or this report. Uh, I also have the Power BI desktop version of that same model. This one is much smaller because I'm leveraging incremental refresh so that I can work quickly at the desktop scale with a little bit of data, in this case, a few days of a month, uh, versus when I publish it, uh, I have a whole lot more data, this 43 million fact table. Okay, uh, and to do this, what you need is a tool called DAX Studio. So to get it, you go to daxstudio.org. Um, ideally, you can do the full install here, but if you can't, if you're not allowed to install stuff on your work computer, for example, you may be able to install this portable version and, and do what, what I'll show you as well. Okay, so once you open DAX Studio, it'll look like this. I have dark mode turned on. Um, there's a couple of settings. You, you can do a lot more with DAX Studio. This is just one great application of it, is getting a VPAX file. And there's a couple settings to check. So I'm using version 3.2.0. And if you go to the options and you go down to the bottom here, this VertiPack analyzer, you're going to want to make sure this include Tom is on the tabular object model. That just helps them have even more uh, information about your model. Still no data. Then you want to make sure this is on. These are both on by default. Um, and this will say, hey, I guess it's okay to get statistics from the data, so what's the cardinality of the column, that kind of stuff, which is very useful, so you want both these on. And then if you have direct query tables in your model, you'll want to turn this on too. It'll take longer to run, but again, you're giving more useful information to whoever's going to help you out. So I encourage you to check this, uh, turn this on as well. Okay, so the first thing with this is you need to connect. So you go to the connect here, and you have a couple options. Like I said, I already have the Power BI version or the desktop version of this model open, but I don't want to choose that one. I could, uh, and I would get some useful information, but not as much as if I connect to the full model. So I want to use this tabular server option. And to get what you put in this field, you need to go to the service, and there's a couple ways to get it. So if I go to the desktop or the workspace where this report and semantic model are sitting, I could get what I need. If I click the ellipsis there and hit the settings, I can go down to server settings and copy this connection string. Okay, the way I like to do it is to go back to the workspace, copy the, go to the workspace settings, uh, go to the license info tab, and then copy this, uh, this connection string here. Okay, once you have that, you go back to DAX Studio, you paste it in, and then you hit connect. At this point, you'll need to authenticate. So I'll choose this one here. And once you connect, you'll be able to choose from all the models that exist in that workspace. In this case, there's only one, so it'll default to the correct one. But if I had others, I could choose uh, from a list here. Okay, from here, um, you want to go to the advanced tab and you can do a couple things. If you want to see the information that you're sharing, you could first choose to view metrics. And so this is running a whole bunch of queries against my published model and it'll come back with a bunch of, again, metadata and statistics about it. And so you can look through here just to see the information that you're sharing, like cardinality, um, you know, the total size of the model, 
information about the columns and relationships, partitions. Um, but again, there's no data here. It's just metadata and statistics. Um, and, but what to generate the actual VPACS file, you then want to choose this export metric. So while we're connected to that model, I choose export metrics and I'll pick this and I'll say, choose where I'm going to put it and hit save and that's it. So now I've got my VPAX file. It shouldn't take very long to generate it um, unless you're doing a direct query one. Uh, and if I go to my uh, location there, you can see it's already done. It's a real small file in this case. And so now I'm ready to send this to whoever's going to help me.